Audiobook Title, Female Night Simulator, I Am Full of Righteousness, Chapter, 01-14, by Little Snow Sprite, Chapter 1, Give Me Something Exciting, Loria Jarati Year's night training course results were less than ideal, however, she managed to pass the graduation exam at the night training school, albeit with some stumbling along the way, and so, it happened, at the age of 16. Miss Laurier successfully joined the Adventurers Management Guild in Creek Town at such a young age. She achieved many goals that older sisters in their twenties or thirties could only dream of. She had obtained an official position. Now, Miss Laurier always wears a shiny golden double eagle badge on her tidy knight's uniform whenever she goes out in the Oda Empire. This symbolizes one's status. Even though she was not yet a noble when she received this badge, she moved up from the honorable mule class to the horse class, proudly soaring to the sky. With that, Miss Laurier's life was complete. Congratulations, congratulations. Yes, the gentle smile always adorned Miss Laurier's face, as lovely as the lavender in the gardens of Wands. She never had grand dreams, she only wanted to secure a stable job and then enjoy a laid-back life, holding on to this stable job happily like embracing a security blanket. That was how things had to be. Who would have thought that she possessed no talent for cultivation, no potential for learning, and didn't even have a good father to rely on? Because Miss Laurier wasn't interested in actively seeking a wealthy benefactor, the peak of her life could be seen with just one glance. After toiling tirelessly for decades, she finally achieved the position of office director at the Adventurers Management Guild in Creek Town. The position of guildmaster is out of reach, as it is filled by officials appointed by the state government. Miss Laurier, who was skilled in calculations, carefully weighed the pros and cons. She felt that with her abilities, it would take her a long time before she became the office director, perhaps even close to entering the coffin. After becoming an elderly grandmother who walked with shaky steps, even if she received a retirement pension twice her current amount, it couldn't be considered a happy and content life. If that's the case, why not start pursuing happiness and joy right now? Hard work is a day, drinking tea and reading the newspaper is also a day. Anyway, the salary won't be less, hash carrot dot carrot hash, the spirit of a knight. Sir, the times have changed, the knights of today are being ridden by others, so there is no spirit to speak of. My dream is to have no dreams. Loria happily walked out of the apartment. On the street, the old lady who was sweeping greeted Loria sweetly. Lovely Loria, are you off to work again? Good morning, Grandma Lily. Tomorrow is our day off. Loria waved her briefcase as usual. She always carried an oversized briefcase that didn't quite match her size, eager to give the impression that she was working diligently and passionately. However, something was off about today's situation. After exchanging greetings, Miss Laurier hesitated to take a step towards the Adventurers Management Guild, the most exciting game, the most intelligent choices, a simulated life, you deserve two of it. As you walk by, don't miss out on a chance to create your future with heartfelt choices in a simulated life. In front of her eyes, two lines of translucent words suddenly appeared. What is this? Loria looked around in astonishment. After repeatedly confirming, she finally realized that only she could see those words. By using this simulator, the protagonist can simulate their future life and experience the countless possibilities of life. Note, the results generated by the simulation will not have any impact on reality. After each simulation, the simulator will evaluate the protagonist's performance and generate rewards corresponding to the evaluation. During the simulation, the protagonist might encounter special events, and completing these events will lead to unexpected and mysterious rewards. Every day, the protagonist has one free opportunity to use the simulator. By recharging, they can unlock more simulation opportunities. Note, regardless of how many times they simulate every day, they can only receive one reward, and the generated reward will automatically refresh on the following day. Life Restart Simulator but it doesn't seem completely like it because at the beginning, you don't need to choose talents. In reality, Loria is a transmigrator. And so, it was. Only then would she be able to completely embrace her flaws. Before transmigrating, 
she had played several simulation games, such as the Life Restart Simulator, which was quite popular at one point, and the Night Test Simulator that gained popularity later on, therefore, she was somewhat familiar with this kind of adventure. Hiss, how intriguing. Is this the cheat code I've been waiting for 10 years? Life simulator successfully loaded. Would the host like to initiate the first simulation? Note, this simulation is designed for beginners and doesn't count towards the daily free simulation limit. Go ahead and start. Loria walked to a deserted corner of the street. Life simulator has been activated. Day 1, slacking off at work. Day 2, because it was the weekend, you slacked off at home. Day 3, it was the weekend, and you were slacking off at home. Day 4, playing hooky at work. Day 5, after listening to the impassioned speech by the guild master, you deeply reflected upon yourself. Loria, oh Loria, how could you have fallen so far? Have you forgotten the motto and spirit of the Knight Academy? Day 6, playing hooky at work. I am worthy, for there are always a few days each month when I reflect. Loria quickly realized. Although this life simulator understands her very well, isn't it too boring? What about the countless possibilities of experiencing life? Give me something exciting, as promised. On the fifteenth day, the contents displayed on the simulator finally changed. Day fifteen, you received a task from the association to deliver documents to the neighboring town. As you walked halfway, you were suddenly captured by a slime girl that appeared out of nowhere. The slime girl brought you to the secret base of the slimes. You looked up and saw a giant slime girl, who was said to be the queen slime. You were swallowed by queen slime in one gulp, inside her belly it was slippery and squishy, constantly squeezing your body. You realized that you had to escape quickly, or you might die here. You suddenly found being squeezed by queen slime very comfortable. Miss Loria furrowed her brow, realizing that things were not as simple as they seemed. Day 16. You discovered that being squeezed by Queen Slime was very comfortable. Day 17. You discovered that being squeezed by Queen Slime is very comfortable. Day 18. After recovering from dehydration, you began to ponder. Well, you just wanted to pursue happiness, and staying here was quite joyful, wasn't it? So, you willingly became Queen Slime's servant and started living an incredibly fulfilling life every day. The simulation came to an end. Achieving the end, the Bride of Slime. Congratulations to the player for achieving the accomplishment of first experience and receiving an additional reward, plus one spirit. Congratulations to the player for receiving an F grade evaluation, triggering a reward, strengthened endurance. What? Seeing the shining golden words, the Bride of Slime in front of her, Miss Loria was instantly captivated, her mind spinning like a whirlpool. I asked you to bring some excitement. Is this the kind of excitement you bring? Chapter 2. How can you falsely accuse someone? Loria was seething with anger. She may have had a touch of laziness, but overall, she was a righteous female knight. Couldn't you see the iron medal on her chest? It's irrefutable evidence. Even though she no longer needed to personally engage in battles with monsters, her heart always stood alongside adventurers. I cannot give in just because I found being squeezed by Queen Slime comfortable. Can I? There was absolutely no possibility of that happening. This garbage simulator was lying. But despite the complaints, Loria needed to carefully study the rewards. Loria gently tapped the white glowing, endurance enhancement, with her mind, and the explanatory text immediately popped up. Endurance enhancement, strengthening of durability. F grade reward, white. You were born different from others. The sensitivity of your body is several times higher than that of an average woman. Even pain caused by impacts brings you great comfort. After activating this skill, the sensitivity of your body will decrease by 15%? Question mark. Loria, a girl standing on the street corner, almost jumped up in anger after reading the description of the reward. Nonsense. Do you think I'm a masochist, enjoying getting hit with pleasure? How could I not have known about such a thing? She gave her cheek a strong tug, feeling only pain spreading throughout her body. Miss Loria? Miss Loria? Suddenly, a voice whispered in her ear. Loria looked up, and standing before her was Lee Wai, the passing town inspector. Mr. Lee Wai, do you have something to tell me? 
Inspector Li Wai looked concerned and said, I noticed you pinching your own face, you seem a bit unwell. Loria gave a light cough and said, I stayed up quite late last night, so I'm feeling a bit tired. Inspector Li Wai said, Miss Loria, you should also learn to balance work and rest. There are always unfinished tasks. Loria smiled professionally and said, I will take note of that. Thank you for your concern. Li Wai couldn't help but feel emotional. Creek Town is a small town situated on the outskirts of the Oda Empire, where wild monsters can be found everywhere. Like him, the patrol officer can only manage public order, while the ones who truly keep Creek Town safe from monster attacks are the large number of adventurers and the Adventurers Management Guild that provides strong logistical support for adventurers. Miss Loria just joined the Adventurers Management Guild this year, and in just two months, she was shown an astonishing dedication to her work that is truly commendable. She often stayed up late at home to handle work-related matters. In the Guild, she always wore a smile that brought joy to people, and there were even rumors that she could stare at a report all day without moving a muscle trying to solve a difficult problem. She wouldn't even notice when the guild master walked up to her, if someone like Miss Loria, a role model in the workplace, were to fall ill, the work at the Adventurers Management Guild would certainly be affected, wouldn't it? R. sighed, these days, if everyone could be as hardworking and diligent as Miss Loria, Creek Town would surely become even more prosperous. Miss Loria, you must learn to balance work and rest. Don't exhaust yourself. As Lee Wai watched Loria walking and yawning, he respectfully bowed from afar. Salute, Loria, who couldn't fathom what others were thinking, let out a sigh. Her spirits were indeed not very good, but who could blame her? She had stayed up late last night reading comic books. Upon reaching the association, they had to switch to a low energy mode and spend this brand new day idling away. We don't need to extract the durability enhancement right away. Let's see if there are better rewards. Loria continued studying the simulator. Because the previous simulation was a beginner's experience, Loria still had one more chance to simulate for free today. Why I was caught just now? It's because I took the main road after receiving the mission. So this time, as long as I take a small road instead, it will be fine. Once upon a time, lines of text appeared before Loria's eyes. Day 1, slacking off at work. Day 2, because it was the weekend, you were slacking off at home. Was it the same for the previous few days? Loria lightly pinched her chin. In that aspect, it seemed quite reasonable. After all, her daily routine was just a cycle of slacking off, so it would be abnormal for any other incidents to occur. On the fifteenth day, the simulation finally took a turn. Day fifteen, you received a task from the association to deliver a document to the neighboring town. After leaving the village, you intentionally chose a seldom traversed path, the air was filled with the scent of flowers and the sound of birds, enchanting and immersive, as you continued on your way, you suddenly found yourself surrounded by a group of green-skinned orc-like creatures, Loria had a feeling that something wasn't right, five green-skinned orc-like creatures pinned you down to the ground and took turns attacking you, after a grueling two hours, as you gazed at the dewdrops glistening on the nearby grass and leaves, you realized you were no longer pure, however, there was no escape for you, as the orc-like creatures brought you back to their camp and locked you inside a tent, day 16, five green-skinned orc-like creatures entered the tent, day 17, ten green-skinned orc-like creatures entered the tent, day 18, fifteen green-skinned orc-like creatures entered the tent, and you said, let the storm come stronger, day 19, one exhausted orc-like creature fainted inside the tent, and the other orc-like creatures erupted into a massive battle to win you over. Due to your presence, Creek Town's orc camp suffered the largest casualties in history. In the end, they had no choice but to reach a compromise and sign the Loria 7 part agreement. From that day onwards, from Monday to Sunday, you lived a life of utmost happiness as the most privileged person. The simulation concluded conclusion reached, the orc-like creatures found a common bond. Congratulations to the player for achieving the accomplishment Monster Hunter and receiving an additional reward of plus one stamina. Congratulations to the player for achieving an F-grade evaluation, earning the reward of Craftsman Apprenticeship.
Question mark. Can I make orc women exhausted and earn the title of Monster Hunter? What a joke. If it weren't for the fact that she couldn't reach, Loria would have hit this simulator. How could you unjustly tarnish someone's innocence? A pure and honorable young girl like me would surely have been mercilessly killed by the evil green skin orc ladies right away, and even if I didn't die, I would immediately commit suicide to prove my innocence. Simulate again. Loria felt frustrated. Both taking the main road and the side roads could lead to accidents. Should I just not go to the head office? She gritted her teeth and spent 10 Oda coins to purchase a new chance for simulation. After using up the free daily simulation chance, the second simulation would cost 10 Oda coins, and then each subsequent time would be 10 times the previous cost. And Loria's daily wage was 100 Oda coins. This is a whole 10 Oda coins. Loria covered her chest, feeling a deep pain in her heart. Day 1, slacking off at work. Day 15. You took a sick leave and didn't go to work. Day 16, playing around at work. Watching the string of playing around that popped up behind, Loria let out a sigh of relief. Finally, things were back to normal, but before she could fully relax, a line of glaring words suddenly appeared. Day 25, a monster tide erupted, and despite fierce resistance, Creek Town was eventually overrun. During your escape, you were apprehended by a skeletal lady who happened to mention that this monster tide seemed to be orchestrated by someone in secret. What? Loria was startled, too occupied to pay attention to the simulated rewards. Twenty-five days later, there was a carefully planned monster tide. If this were true, she had to do something quickly. Otherwise she would either die or become a plaything of some skeletal lady. Chapter 3, The Importance of Endurance for Female Knights. Loria, carrying a large briefcase, hurried into the Adventurers Management Guild. Inside the office at this time, only a few people were sitting sporadically. As a newcomer in the workplace, Loria's usual task was to manage the registration of new adventurers and compile daily data on their movements. In the vast Odor Empire, Creek Town was far from being renowned, consequently, there weren't many adventurers willing to make a name for themselves here and their average strength was relatively low. To illustrate it in video game terms, it would be like Creek Town serves as the village for beginners, similar to the Alvin defense line in Dungeon and Fighter. Of course, considering Loria's experience and job responsibilities, she couldn't be compared to Syria. She didn't possess the kind of superpower that would make adventurers obediently pay money with just a few words. Senior bitch, are there only a few of you in the office? Loria approached a desk piled high with books. The middle-aged man with round glasses looked up and said, At this hour, most people haven't arrived yet. The Adventurers Guild is the official organization of the Oda Empire. Working here is akin to having a sick job. For those with no ambition for promotion, it is impossible to arrive at the office early. Loria surveyed the surroundings carefully. The empty office space gradually calmed her. The monster tide was an extremely terrifying disaster, that is true, but even more terrifying was the possibility that the monster tide might have been planned by someone. What is the purpose of the planner? And where is he hiding now? Loria furrowed her brow. The person who worked hard to create this disaster must have had a motive, without knowing exactly where that person was hiding. If she were to recklessly inform someone that she knew someone was secretly causing trouble, in case that message reached the ears of the planner, she would be in significant trouble. Who looks the most like a villain? Loria's mind was suddenly filled with a bunch of names. The blonde, busty guild master, rumored to be of noble descent, is notorious for the improper behavior of the Oda Empire's nobility. It is uncertain whether the guild master is a mad individual harboring the desire to see the world burn. In Creek Town, the first adventurer, D-rank mage Inga Wright, was rumored to be able to defeat the terrifying pig demon king single-handedly. With such abilities, she was entirely capable of planning a monster tide. And there was Felix, the receptionist of the association. We started working at the same time and he immediately threw himself into his work like a whirlwind. He almost caught me pretending to be busy. It seemed like he knew I wasn't really working. Why do some people have to make life difficult for others? He didn't seem like a good person at all. 
Loria pondered and pondered but couldn't find a definite answer. In Creek Town, where tens of thousands of people lived, if she could catch criminals just by meditating, then she would be the extraordinary detective that even Sherlock Holmes, Poirot, and Miss Marple would marvel at. Can I only rely on the simulator? When Loria saw that purchasing a single simulation opportunity required 100 Odo coins, she almost felt faint. In truth, she was not obsessed with wealth, she simply happened to have a natural affinity with money. For example, money could provide her with everything she lacked. Miss Loria had been living in an orphanage, always experiencing the days of having enough to eat for herself but not for the whole family. Poverty, although it didn't make her unstoppable, taught her how to get by in life. 100, but that's my whole day's salary, it's too expensive, how about waiting until tomorrow? No, no, Loria gently shook her adorable, pale ash blonde hair, the situation was urgent, and they had to quickly find clues, otherwise, once the 25th day arrived, she would die, and even if she had the money by then, it would be of no use, recharge, Loria gritted her teeth and spent another 100 Oda coins, a new simulation began, day one, Sensing the hidden conspiracy beneath the calm daily life in Creek Town, you decide that you cannot sit idly by. Therefore, today you, unusually, skip work to investigate. You start to gather information by asking around, inquiring about any unusual behavior of monsters outside Creek Town. The adventurers who have come to register report that they haven't noticed anything out of the ordinary. Near the end of the workday, you still haven't discovered anything unusual. So, you find the Guildmaster and share your findings with her. The Guildmaster is greatly surprised and promises to initiate an investigation. You returned home and got ready to take a bath. As you walked up to the mirror, you noticed a strange purple light outside the window. Curious, you stepped closer to take a look. An unseen force swept by, and your head was severed from your body. As your head flew into the sky, you caught a glimpse of your neck gushing blood. You died. The simulation came to an end. Result, the swift legend of Greek town. Congratulations to the player for achieving the Door Slayer achievement and receiving an additional reward. Agility plus one. Congratulations to the player for receiving an F grade evaluation, resulting in the reward. Overhead perspective! Exclamation mark. Loria instinctively grasped her own neck. After taking several deep breaths, she finally confirmed that her head hadn't flown away. However, if she hadn't controlled herself from asking random questions everywhere just now. Danger, danger, danger. This is not a story of time travel, nor is it a limitless resurrection online game. If her head really flew away, then she would be completely dead. Who did it, Guildmaster? Or was it someone who saw me asking around? Loria felt a lingering fear in her heart. She plopped back into her office chair, her mind filled with uncertainty. This time, Felix walked over. The young boy, with his long blue hair tied up behind his head, was filled with energy and determination. Good morning, Loria. You came even earlier than me today. Good morning, Felix. Loria had a big smile on her face, but deep down she was really angry. Negation negation. You, traitor to the working class. I don't have time to deal with you today. After Felix had walked away, Loria opened the simulator again. She didn't have enough money for the fifth simulation today, so she decided to collect her rewards first. The rewards that appeared before her eyes now were enhanced endurance, introduction to craftsman skills, keen eye, and overhead perspective. Crafting is a true craft, and after receiving this reward, she would learn all crafting skills 15% faster. As for keen eye and overhead perspective, the former enhances vision while the latter increases composure. Choose to strengthen my endurance. Loria is very sensitive to her own body, very sensitive indeed. Reducing her body's sensitivity by 15% may not seem like much, but it was enough to make her more enduring in battles against the monster girls. Even as a female knight, she couldn't deny her endurance. After all, how else could she conquer those monster girls? Could she really expect to drown them herself? Endurance enhancement successfully acquired. After seeing the prompt, Loria pinched herself again. How come it feels like nothing has changed? Never mind. Let's leave it at that for now. 
Let's simulate a few more times after midnight. The following day, Loria went to work as usual, pretending to be busy. She had stayed up until midnight, sitting cross-legged on the bed. She took a deep breath. While she was simulating, she also had to find a way to make some money, so she could do more simulations. Once upon a time, day one, a brand new day begins, and you realize the importance of money. So, while registering adventurers, you hint that they should give you money. <laughs> what I meant was to make money, not to make money like this. Chapter 4, A Righteous Female Night Punishment Looms. Loria was left bewildered. This simulator always seems to cast her in a negative light. She was falsely accused of being the kind of person who could be easily manipulated and extorted adventurers, spreading rumors of her supposed moral downfall. Can it be true? Can it be true? Can it be true? No matter how you look at it, she is not a woman of such low character. And besides, isn't today a holiday? When there's a holiday, I don't stay at home and rest. So why would I go to work? Loria continued to read, growing more and more frustrated. The young magician girl standing in front of you looked naive, holding a money bag filled with odor coins. You immediately realized that she was an easy target. Miss Plump Sheep didn't understand the ins and outs of the adventurer business. After being duped by you, she was determined to give you a portion of her money as a token of gratitude. She even thought you were a kind person. Humphrey. What kind of person am I if I'm not a good person? Loria clutched her chest in frustration. Miss Plump Sheep joyfully exclaimed, I've only just stepped out and already encountered such a caring older sister. Isn't it true that there aren't just bad people everywhere outside, as my dad says? Just as you were about to succeed, Felix walked over, fearing that your actions would be exposed. You had no choice but to let go of the little plump sheep in front of you. Felix asked how you had come, even though you didn't have to work today. You casually brushed it off, saying you were here to serve as an adventurer. Day 2, after experiencing yesterday's failure, you learned your lesson and realized that you shouldn't choose the path of wrongdoing. However, earning money is so tiring. Because it's the weekend, you stayed at home and lazed around. Day 3. While goofing off at work, you were caught in the act of slacking. The guildmaster asked for help with some chores, and you voluntarily offered to assist. In the process of handling the tasks, you sneakily embezzled up to 100 Oda coins from the adventurer's deposit, without anyone noticing. Day 4, you continued to offer your help and once again embezzled 100 Oda coins without being noticed. Loria, is this truly a life simulator? or a crime simulator. Gosh, it wasn't until the seventh day that the situation began to change. Day 7, as you watched your positive energy dwindling, you felt deep regret and decided to stop using the margin. Day 8, when you woke up in the morning, you realized that indeed using the margin brought money faster. Considering that you earned 100 Oda coins less yesterday, Today you decided to go all out and directly embezzled 1000 Oda coins. Day 9, today, you planned to work harder and take less money. Just as you were falsifying the accounts, you suddenly heard faint footsteps behind you, a shadow cast over your body, and as you turned around, your mouth was covered, and you fainted. Day 10, when you woke up, you found yourself suspended by a black belt-like rope. Your left foot barely touched the ground. While your right foot was lifted up, your mouth was gagged with a cloth, and your clothes were nowhere to be seen. It seemed like a secret room, and thoughts of some special movies you had watched before filled your mind, making you feel very scared. The door to the secret room opened, and to your surprise, in walked the busty blonde guildmaster dressed in interrogator attire. It was none other than Adeline. Adeline harshly reprimanded your embezzlement her anger making her reject your pleas for mercy. She began whipping you with a whip. The pain made you feel quite comfortable. Upon seeing your expression, Adeline realized that being beaten made you feel comfortable. She decided to change the way she punished you. Day 11, with your left foot almost numb, you finally awaited Adeline's arrival. Coming up from behind, Adeline administered your punishment. Your resilience skill kicked in, but your body still remained remarkably sensitive. Despite your attempts to resist, you helplessly watched as she drew a line on you. Day 12, 
Since the rope had become soaking wet, Adeline replaced it for you. She punished you from the front and drew a vertical line on your body. Day 13, you continued to endure punishment. Day 14, the punishment continued. Day 15, you found yourself trapped under Adeline's punishment. As you looked at the vertical line on your body, you admitted your mistake to Adeline and promised to atone with your body for the rest of your life. The simulation came to an end, achieving the conclusion, living happily ever after with the Guildmaster I. Congratulations to the player for achieving the Righteousness Achievement, receiving an additional reward of plus two in spirit. Congratulations to the player for achieving an E-grade evaluation and receiving the reward. Insightful perception, beginner level. After watching the entire simulation process, Loria was frozen in astonishment. Compared to everything else, her excessive use of margin in the simulator was nothing short of addictive. What on earth is this plot? In Loria's mind, she imagined herself with one foot touching the ground, while the other foot was tightly bound and lifted high in the air. Then, the furious Adeline appeared from behind her and harshly punished her. Swoosh. Her body trembled intensely, feeling a shiver run down her spine. This scene is just too ridiculous, making it impossible for one to seriously contemplate it. Actually, what was even more terrifying was that Loria had no idea that Adeline had this side to her. The charismatic big sister with blonde hair, who walked with her head held high, spoke concisely and forcefully, and never dragged her feet when it came to tasks, was secretly so terrifying. Don't judge a book by its cover, Loria gave a little tap to her own thigh. She thought long and hard, only to realize that she was actually the purest among all the characters in the simulation. Silly thing, she gently touched her abdomen, where the word pure was written in the simulation. I, Loria, am full of righteousness, and I will never let you, you meanies, manipulate me. After a while, Loria calmed down and began to examine the results of this simulation. The ending, living happily ever after with the Guildmaster I, had an extra I. This means that there are multiple branches in this ending, but for now, we don't know how to unlock the following branches. After achieving the achievement righteousness, she gained an additional two points of spirit, which was really nice. Who doesn't like becoming stronger? Attributes are actually something that all adventurers in this world possess. It is said to be related to the goddess who has a renowned reputation on the continent, as long as adventurers register at the guild and receive their exclusive identification cards, they can see their own attributes. After graduating from the night training school, Loria joined the Adventurers Management Guild directly. She bore the title of a female knight, but she had never truly registered as an adventurer, thus unable to see her own attributes. The reward for this simulation, insight into people, beginner level, was actually equivalent to the reconnaissance skills in online games, but it only worked on adventurers rank T and below, it was a rather impressive skill, Loria was considering whether she could obtain better skills by trying again, so she didn't extract them immediately, I can't slack off anymore, if I continue to slack off, I will die, if you really want to wait for death, why bother slacking off? Isn't it more joyful to touch yourself? Loria decided to go to the guild and register first, then see if she could find a legal way to make money quickly. She didn't want to be caught and punished by the guild master. Chapter 5 After the Evaluation A surprising career suggestion Before acquiring the life simulator, Miss Loria often spent her weekends simulating a lazy pig. When the sun streamed through the window onto the bed, the lazy pig would usually have one leg sticking out from under the blanket, sometimes even inadvertently revealing a smooth and trim little tummy. It's hard for outsiders to imagine that the glamorous and vivacious Miss Loria could also have such unglamorous moments. However, there wasn't a significant problem. After all, Loria lived alone in the apartment assigned to her by the Adventurers Management Guild, not to mention even if she had an awkward sleeping position or decided to sleep in the nude, it wouldn't affect anyone else. Normally, Loria would wait until two o'clock in the afternoon before rising to search for food. After eating, she'd lay on the bed and read comic books. If something bothered her, she'd go back to sleep. Then she'd wake up, eat again, and continue napping. But today, 
the situation was a bit different. Just thinking about her experiences in the life simulator kept her from getting any sleep. Now, there were roughly three paths left for her to choose from. The first path, escaping immediately, isn't it just a stable job? I don't want it, why fret about having no future when you have a strong heart? Unfortunately, Miss Loria couldn't utter such eloquent words. She had spent five long years at the Knight Academy, all for the sake of obtaining this opportunity for a laid-back life. If they made her leave now, all her previous efforts would be in vain. Moreover, if luck was not on her side, she might even be considered a deserter and be wanted nationwide, who could guarantee she wouldn't be captured by slime girls and green skin orcs on her way out of Creek Town. Running away wouldn't be her choice unless absolutely necessary. The second path lying flat and waiting for death. Loria, though she was slacking off, hadn't reached this level of inactivity. After all, who says a salted fish can't wiggle a bit? Loria had dreams, and if possible, she wanted to become the mighty Dark Queen ruling the world, but that possibility didn't seem to be within her grasp. The third path, seeking a way to survive, this was a challenging journey. After several simulations, Loria speculated that the mastermind was in Creek Town, and there was even a possibility that they were in the Adventurers Management Guild. Otherwise, during the fourth simulation, she wouldn't have been able to make it through the first day. Is it Adeline, the Guild Master? Loria couldn't come to a definite conclusion. In the simulation, she couldn't see clearly who was responsible, and she had also asked others for information before speaking with the Guild Master. One more thing. Her impression of the guild master wasn't bad compared to the slime girl, green orc girl, and skeleton girl, even though the guild master had punished her severely, they eventually reached a happy ending together, living happily ever after with the guild master I. It is said that the guild master is a noble. She, in a way, also became associated with the nobility, allowing her to lie even flatter than before. Being punished isn't really a very painful thing. I'm even enjoying it, R, P F F T. No. It's not okay. Loria quickly shook her head. She was Loria, someone who never lived beneath others throughout her life. Loria had been tossing and turning all night until 7 o'clock in the morning, but still couldn't fall asleep. As the sky brightened, she climbed out of bed. A new day. A new beginning. Loria, with dark circles under her eyes, left home and her first stop was the reception hall of the Adventurers Management Guild. Newcomers register as adventurers here. Since she arrived early, she thought she would have to wait a while to register, but to her surprise, as soon as she entered the hall, she saw Felix. Oh my goodness! This guy always takes the initiative to work overtime and does the work of three people on his own. And now he's working on the weekends too. How are other colleagues supposed to live? Loria reluctantly walked over with a brave face. Good morning. Wow. It's Loria. Why do you have dark circles? Could it be because you worked late at home last night? I always feel like this person is mocking me. Loria endured the weight on her chest and quivered, saying, It's nothing major. I'm just here to register as an adventurer. No problem. When it comes to work, Felix immediately adopted a serious attitude with full dedication. The cost is one odor coin. Loria reached out and gently pressed the small magic circle in front of the window. As a member of the Adventurers Management Guild, she didn't have to pay a deposit of 50 Oda coins. If it weren't for that, she wouldn't have come to register. With that money, she could save up for another simulation, which sounded great. At worst, she could even buy a few pig trotters to nibble on. One minute later, Loria received her own special identity card. Name. Loria Jarati Year. Age, 16 years old. Registered location, Odor Empire, Province of Claron, Creek Town. Occupation, Novice Knight, F. Attributes, Strength 6, Agility 6, Endurance 9, Intelligence 5, Spirit 7, Charisma 9. Talents, Hypersensitivity, Optimist, Stubborn. Skills, Shield Bash, Greatsword Combo. I'm playing dead, Endurance Training. Enhanced Resilience. Career Advice. In the world of adventurers, the letter before the adventurer's ID number represents the continent of Ozil, where the Odor Empire is located. The first digit, 1, represents the Odor Empire. 
The letter F after the name of the profession doesn't mean that Laurier's chest is as big as F. It represents the level of the profession. F level is the lowest level of profession. As for the attributes, huh? Laurier froze in place. If they didn't remember wrongly, normal identity cards didn't have charm attributes, talent slots, and career suggestions. Did they make a mistake on my ID card? Why are there some extra things added to it? Do you have it? Felix took the ID card and glanced at it. No problem. Isn't this exactly the same as the sample card? Are you sure about this? Loria stared at it for a long time, and in the end, she quietly took the card back. It seemed like the problem lay with the simulator. She had to study slowly all by herself. Having an extra charm attribute wasn't a big deal, but a charm of nine was quite a compliment. But those few talents were really extraordinary. Hypersensitivity. Your body is extremely sensitive, several times more than that of an average human female. This makes it easier for you to get excited and feel exhausted. Optimist. Due to your physical nature, even in the midst of suffering, you are able to feel happiness. Stubborn tongue. Your mouth is particularly stubborn, unless you are in an extremely excited state, which occasionally brings some positive effects to you. What kind of thing is this? Who is being stubborn? Who is being stubborn? Miss Loria had almost lost her composure. She had to face the wall. Her back turned to the hallway. So no one would see her fierce expression. Finally, she clicked on the career advice. After a comprehensive evaluation of your talents and attributes, the most suitable profession for you is a geisha, prostitute, go away, dash. Miss Loria immediately tossed her ID card away. Is this your identity card? When she looked up, what met her gaze was a girl shining like the stars. The girl was wearing a red and purple outfit, with long and slender legs adorned with sparkling little stars. Her hair was styled in twin ponytails, and on her head, she wore a large magic hat. Her countenance could only be described as adorable and beautiful, with bright green eyes that sparkled with liveliness. Of course. The most dazzling thing was the bulging money bag she held in her hand. Understood. This was the same Miss Plump Sheep who had appeared in the previous simulation. Chapter 6. The Female Knight Explores Unexpected Opportunities. Coins. Lots of money. Some money that could easily be obtained by deceiving a little. The moment Loria spotted Miss Plump Sheep, her emotions took a swift and surprising turn. When she raised her right hand, it felt as though she was holding a sharp sickle, as long as she gently waved it. Gak. The thick, long, and green chives fell into her hands. Although Loria wasn't clear about how much money was actually in the bag, judging by its size, there must have been at least tens of thousands of Oda coins. This. She couldn't help but gasp in shock. It usually took her a year to save up this much money. Drat. Loria turned her head and glanced at Felix who was standing with a smile behind the window. Her actions today differed from her simulations. However, considering Mr. Felix's way of doing things, once he attempts to take Miss Plump Sheep's money for himself, Mr. Felix will surely intervene to stop him. With no other options, Loria had to let Miss Plump Sheep find other ways to make quick money. Loria stepped forward and took the identification card from Miss Plump Sheep's hand. Thank you. You're welcome, my dad said, when we are away from home. It's important to help each other. The innocent smile warmed people's hearts like a gentle breeze in spring. Goodbye. The two bid each other farewell. Loria tucked her identity card into her pocket and left the association hall. Actually, the career advice was quite accurate. Her hypersensitivity made her unsuitable to be a knight. This was not a comedic cartoon, and if a masochistic female knight with hypersensitivity ventured into monster-infested areas, she would either be drained by the monsters or her teammates. If she were to become a geisha, she would likely become a top performer quickly. The Oda Empire's porn industry was not to be underestimated, with its unique addition of various monster girls making it a highly competitive and exclusive field. While Creek Town might not have a particularly thriving porn industry, it did receive some coverage in the Oda Travel Newspaper's porn industry section. A top performer here could earn at least 30,000 Oda coins per month. It's almost equivalent to my one-year salary. T.S.K. Loria felt a bit envious, 
but she could only admire the top geishas who earned so much money. Becoming a geisha herself was out of the question. She had also considered other options, like starting a business at sea. Every day, many merchants would appear in the Adventurer's Guild Hall, making money by reselling information, items, and equipment. Unfortunately, Loria didn't have much time left, and it was likely that the monster influx into Creek Town had already occurred. Let's run one more simulation and see. In her previous simulations, she had stayed at home like a pig on weekends, but today was different. The focus of this simulation was twofold, finding quick ways to earn money and secretly investigating the mastermind behind the monster wave. Investigating straightforwardly like before wouldn't work. After going through many simulations, Loria had learned some patterns, even if she didn't fully understand the simulator's evaluation criteria. Exploration was an essential factor for earning points. The so-called exploration was all about unlocking an extraordinary life in this world. If I can get the top reward, maybe it can help me survive in the next simulation? Okay, 10 Oda coins. Topped up. Day 1, you spent the entire morning visiting nearby markets, but you didn't find any legally yet quick ways to make money. You had no choice but to investigate the mastermind behind the monster wave. You intercepted several passing adventurer teams and asked them if there were any unusual monster activities near Creek Town recently. The adventurers replied that everything was normal around Creek Town. On your way home, you passed by a street known for its pawn industry. You noticed that the brothels were recruiting new members, but you didn't pay much attention. However, you heard that a person claiming to be a reporter from the Oda Travel newspaper visited the street this morning for an investigation, which piqued your interest. Day 2, you continued your investigation, but still found nothing. On your way home, you encountered a reporter from the Oda Travel newspaper. You were surprised to see that she was a tall and elegant woman, accompanied by the mayor's secretary as they strolled around Greek town. Day 3, as the workday arrived. You volunteered to support the frontline post. However, today's investigation still yielded no results. Day 4, the investigation yielded no results once again. In the afternoon, Felix accompanied the reporter from the Oda Travel newspaper to visit the association. Day 5, you discovered that selling illicitly printed adult books was very profitable, but the mayor sent out many inspectors to apprehend these tax evading merchants. You had no choice but to give up. Day 6, the investigation still yielded no results. Days went by, and by the 14th day, Loria hadn't uncovered any useful information during the investigation. What is the root of the problem? She furrowed her brows. Creek Town had a frequent population turnover, so it was impossible to investigate everyone within 24 days. On the 15th day, the simulated content took an unexpected turn. Day 15. Unable to resist your desperate need for money, you walked to the red light district. After pondering for an hour, you finally made the decision to enter the brothel. However, your condition was to only serve female clients. The brothel owner gladly accepted, believing that even with this condition, he could make a fortune. Question mark. Miss Loria had many question marks floating above her head. Day 16. You served five clients in one go and made a lot of money. Day 17. You welcomed 10 clients all at once and earned even more money. Day 18. One customer was exhausted by you and fainted. The owner of the brothel had to step in and apologize. Day 19. The female guest who was captivated by your charm erupted into a fierce argument, which turned into a big brawl. One woman guest lost her life during the fight, causing even the mayor to be alarmed. Day 21. You were set free but you couldn't bear to stay in Creek Town any longer. With the introduction from the brothel owner and a reporter from the Oda Travel newspaper, you set off for Nightingale, the most famous brothel in the province of Claren. Day 23, safely escorted by the brothel staff, you arrived at Nightingale. The owner of Nightingale was delighted that you were willing to work there and agreed to your conditions. From then on, with your outstanding appearance, unique abilities, and exceptional skills. You gradually became the star performer at Nightingale. This simulation comes to an end. Ending achieved. Queen of the pawn industry.
Congratulations to the player for achieving the achievement power of talent and receiving an additional reward. Stamina plus 2. Congratulations to the player for obtaining a degrade evaluation, resulting in a reward. Inventory item. Congratulations to the player for triggering the special event hidden leader, gaining an extra chance to claim a reward. As Loria looked at the final simulation result, she was overwhelmed with shock. Queen of the pawn industry, a degrade evaluation? Unusual incidents. Fuck you. After a while, Miss Loria finally regained her composure. Imaginary and simulated things are all make-believe. The main focus now is to discover what exactly that hidden leader is. Chapter 7, The Lady Knight, Defender of Justice, Loria gently tapped the large words displayed on the simulator with her mind, spelling out hidden leader. Instantly, a large paragraph of explanatory text appeared. Note, during the simulation process, the host may encounter special events. Completing these special events can lead to unexpected and mysterious rewards. Special event, The Hidden Leader, Beneath the Calm Everyday Life. A group of individuals is attempting to overthrow the Empire's rule, they may be found among the powerful, wandering the streets and alleys, or even right beside you, led by their enigmatic leader known as their hidden leader. Right beside me, Loria was startled, instinctively looking around. At this moment, she had already reached the flower market in Creek Town. The scorching sun cast a gentle warmth, filled with the fragrance of flowers nearby. Sparkling water jets from a fountain resonated with the laughter of children. Loria yearned for a peaceful life. Don't stop me from lazing around, or I'll kiss you to death, she said to herself, quickly calming down. Although the incident didn't explicitly link the monster tied to these subversive individuals, regular people wouldn't typically engage in such twisted activities, right? She reviewed the simulation records, trying to identify the suspicious person. However, the contents were complex, with over 20 individuals, each having both a first name and a last name. She couldn't pinpoint who might be associated with the hidden leader. Or perhaps none of these people were related to the hidden leader, and what mattered was an event she encountered during the simulation. Oh no! How annoying! Loria exclaimed, feeling frustrated. This perplexing puzzle emerged suddenly, making her question whether it was too challenging for her. While she wasn't foolish, she certainly wasn't a sharp-witted detective who could detect the slightest clues. Her only sensitivity was to her own body. If there's no other choice, I'll have to use the process of elimination and try one by one. But if I do that, I'll need to figure out how to earn money even more. Am I really going to become a geisha? Oh, right. As Loria pondered, she remembered the reward she received during the early morning simulation. The ability of reconnaissance. Although reconnaissance couldn't reveal the background story of others, it could display data such as attributes and professions, an incredible treasure. Just now, the simulator gave away another chance to claim a reward. Why hesitate? Insightful perception, beginner level, extraction successful, inventory collected successfully. The inventory, as the name suggests, is a common feature in games, but unlike item grids, this inventory has a 10 cubic meter space. Loria got excited. She used her reconnaissance skills on a passing young woman. Name, Rick Frice. Attributes, Strength 4, Agility 6, Stamina 4, Intelligence 6, Spirit 50. Loria was surprised. He was a man. She rubbed her eyes vigorously, only to realize that the big brother passing by had an even perkier butt than hers. I think I may have underestimated this world a little. It took Loria some time to calm her excited emotions. She then took out her identity card on it. There was indeed an additional inventory slot. But what stood out even more was the stamina, which had already reached 11. If I remember correctly, the recent achievement rewards I received were mostly related to stamina. After only simulating it six times, I gained an additional three points. If her stamina continued to rise like this, wouldn't her attributes end up like this? Strength 10. Agility 10. Stamina 100. Intelligence 9. Spirit 90. Vertical bar. With 8 points of stamina, she could single-handedly take on 15 green skin orc women. With 9 points of stamina, she exhausted the guests during a rehearsal. What would happen with 100 points of stamina? She might be able to 
flood the entire Seventh Army, Miss Loria found herself trapped in endless terror. No, no, it absolutely can't turn out like this. She shifted her gaze to the inventory, which was incredibly easy to use. She could focus her attention on the item she wanted to put into the inventory. For example, bracelet. Loria watched her right hand bracelet mysteriously disappear and appear in her inventory. Try again. Pants. Her underwear was put into her inventory, and she felt a cool sensation as it disappeared from her body. She selected her underwear, and two options appeared in front of her, take out, and, equip. Get ready. In just a moment, Loria realized her underwear had returned, and she was wearing it properly without any discomfort. She became instantly excited. The reason she chose to use underwear for the experiment was that it wouldn't be easily noticed by passers-by. After conducting the experiment, her hypothesis was proven correct. With the help of her inventory, she could easily undress in one second and dress in one second. Ha <laughs> ha. This way, I won't have to dress myself when I wake up, and I won't have to take off my clothes when I shower. When the lazy dog was searching for a way to be lazy, it possessed a pair of enviable perceptive eyes. Loria's mood, which was somewhat down earlier, was suddenly uplifted. She put away her ID card and decided to take a stroll nearby, searching for a way to make money quickly. But as she walked to the outskirts of the red light district, she stopped in her tracks. She saw someone she knew, although not that familiar. They had briefly met in both the virtual and real worlds. In the corner of the red light district, Miss Plump Sheep, wearing a large magical hat, was surrounded by several people dressed as adventurers. Loria didn't want to meddle in other people's affairs, but the words of those adventurers made her cautious. Miss, are you a new adventurer visiting Creek Town for the first time? That lady must be unfamiliar with this area. I think you, Miss, might need a Creek Town adventure guide. Buy it now and get a limited edition food voucher and spa voucher as a bonus. Miss, Loria became very angry. These individuals seem to be deceiving and exploiting newbies. In an instant, she remembered her encounter with Miss Plump Sheep in the simulator and Felix's warm smile. Loria's chest swelled with anger. I, Loria, stand up for justice. How dare you! A bunch of scoundrels, tarnish the reputation of Greek town. Rolling up her sleeves, she dashed out. Humphrey, the money she didn't get, no one else would either. Chapter 8 I, Loria, can charge a hundred more times. As a border town, the liveliest places in Creek Town are the Adventurers Management Guild and the Red Light District. The Red Light District stretches one kilometer along the western side of Creek Town, featuring various themed brothels, as well as restaurants, bars, romantic hotels, and even a slime footbath shop for visitors to enjoy. At this moment, on a bustling street corner, Miss Plump Sheep's eyes sparkled like stars. Surprisingly, there are still free gifts. She exclaimed. The adventurer with a simple and honest face replied, The free gifts are limited, but miss, you arrived early, so you're in luck. How much does an adventure guide cost? I'll buy one. Miss Plump Sheep eagerly reached for her purse. Under the shining sunlight, her purse gleamed with a cold light that nearly dazzled the eyes of nearby adventurers. That must be at least 10,000 Dodo coins, right? Little did they know that this newcomer was taking naivete to a whole new level. It's amusing how excessively silly she is, don't you think? The kind-hearted adventurer quickly lowered his voice and said, Miss, since you're so generous, I have an exclusive piece of news to share with you. Exclusive news? Miss Plump Sheep's ears perked up. The adventurer nodded. This story is about Queen Slime, the most fearsome monster outside of Creek Town. Since it's crowded here, why don't we find a quieter place to talk? Miss Plump Sheep fell silent. She had come to be known as the Adventure Queen, and if she could defeat the most terrifying monster in Creek Town, her fame would surely spread quickly. MMM. She nodded eagerly. She was about to leave with a few adventurers when suddenly, a person dashed out from the bushes. Let go of that. Girl. A loud shout made everyone at the entrance of the red light district turn around. It's Miss Loria from the guild. Is that the righteous Loria Jaratia? It's her. It's her. It's really her. Miss Plump Sheep recognized Loria at first sight. Are you calling me? 
Loria clenched her fists tightly and nodded fiercely. I, Loria, am truly angry. At first, it was because someone else was going to take the chives she couldn't reach, but now, things had changed. You, you, and you. Miss Loria stood with her left hand on her hip, her right index finger pointing at each of the adventurers one by one. With such good leak in front of you, you're actually thinking of pulling it out by the roots instead of pursuing sustainable development and exhausting the resources in one go. Your mindset. She was really disappointed. Even the three African tyrants knew how to play better. What's happening? One of the adventurers asked. Loria snorted. Don't think I don't know what you're up to. You're just trying to scam her money, you scoundrels. Do you know that what you're doing is illegal? Deceive me? Miss Plump Sheep pointed at herself in surprise, feeling bewildered. The kind hearted adventurer protested, Nonsense. Even if you are from the Adventurers Management Guild, you can't unjustly accuse someone out of thin air. Loria took a step forward with a thud and exclaimed loudly, Still acting tough. The identity card even said she was stubborn. But there was someone even more stubborn than her. From the way you seem so skilled, you must have been doing this job for a long time. I refuse to believe there hasn't been anyone before who has worked with you around here. As soon as the words fell, a chorus of condemnations arose from the onlookers. I met them before. Last month, my friend was tricked by them. He spent 50 coins to buy a book about a giant rock swimming fashion show. Oh, my goodness. That friend you talked about. The gifted voucher promised to one-on-one -on -one personal service with the slime girl, but it turned out to be a snotty bug. Sob, give me a refund. The sound waves crashed like waves, revealing one ugly truth after another. Many things that weren't done by these adventurers were also attributed to them. Their faces grew increasingly grim, and if this continued, they would be torn apart by the angry onlookers. The leading kind-hearted adventurer patted his companion's shoulder. Nicholas, deal with the whole situation for them. A serious-looking adventurer named Nicholas emerged. In the next moment, screams erupted as Nicholas pulled out a knife. My knife, it's a precious heirloom, today. Before he could finish his sentence, Loria rushed over, drawing a knife. Do you think you can scare me with a knife? I'm not pretending to be a knight here. I graduated as an elite from a night training school with a thousand students. Don't think I'm a weakling just because I fight powerful monsters every day in a simulator relying on my endurance. Loria easily threw Nicholas to the ground. Before anyone could react, she grabbed Nicholas by the collar and unleashed her night skill, Shielded Charge. In this world, a frying pan can be used as a shield. A wooden door plank can be used as a shield. Who says people can't be used as shields? Crush you. Loria dashed around recklessly. Nicholas felt himself being hung on the raging bull's horns. Help, help. But nobody dared to intervene. The once fierce and simple-hearted adventurer slipped away swiftly. This move, though not as powerful as a broomstick covered in feces, was enough to make them hesitant to take action. They had come to deceive, not to kill. In the current situation, if Nicholas fought back, he would face severe consequences. If he didn't fight back, they themselves would face severe consequences. What could he do then? Don't come over here. Epsilon equals epsilon equals hash greater than. Charge. Charge. I can still charge. In Loria's fierce charge, the onlookers scattered and fled. At this moment, Loria's endurance advantage came into play, whereas Nicholas felt dizzy from all the rushing. Excessive exercise could be considered as self-inflicted torture, and when Miss Loria is suffering, her gift as an optimist kicks in, making her feel immensely joyful. I can make another hundred attempts. Run. Keep running. He he he. A few minutes later, the kind-hearted adventurer fell to the ground, sunburnt and weeping uncontrollably. It was just a simple scam for money. Why be so cruel? I can't take it anymore. Please give me some relief. Useless. Do you dare to come out as a foolish cabbage like this? Miss Loria disdainfully tossed the unconscious Nicholas onto the ground. At that moment, Inspector Lee Wai, who had been hiding nearby for a long time, walked over. Miss Loria, would you mind handing them over to me for handling? Take them. Loria didn't care. After all, 
there was no reward to claim. Li Wei quickly expressed his gratitude, and a few of the onlookers who hadn't been scared away joined in with cheers. Knight of Justice, Loria, brave lady knight. Loria was on cloud nine. She had told them she was full of righteousness, but they still didn't believe her. Um, Miss Plump Sheep walked over with an embarrassed expression. Um, I'm Yu Kaiheim, from Clarence City. Thank you, I really had no idea they were scammers. If it weren't for you, I would have fallen for their trick. Loria burst into laughter, saying, Miss Yu Kaiheim, relax. In Creek Town, the people are kind hearted, warm, and hospitable. The majority of them are good individuals. Just like me. Sigma Omega Comma Sigma. Yukaiheim nodded. Her dad said there were bad people everywhere outside, but it's not entirely true, right? She had just stepped out and already she met a reliable big sister. Chapter 9, Work Hard, Why Not Become the Guildmaster's Wife Instead. Yukaiheim's gratitude was more direct than Loria had anticipated. Miss Loria, as a token of my gratitude, please accept this. Yukaiheim handed Loria a stack of ten coins, each worth fifty Oda coins. Loria was taken aback, not expecting such a generous gesture. Just moments ago, she had been contemplating how to extract money from Yukaiheim. In the absence of funds, she was scheming to enjoy a free meal with her elaborate plan. The plan had entailed inviting Yukaiheim to the renowned Hop and Skip Slime restaurant in the Red Light District for a meal, followed by a leisurely foot massage and exquisite delicacies. Then, she would pretend to forget her wallet at the cashier's counter, counting on Yukaiheim's trusting nature to settle the bill. The scheme would conclude with a promise of I'll get you next time. However, with Yukaiheim directly offering money, there was no need for such a convoluted plan. Loria suppressed her excitement and maintained modesty. She turned her face away and said, Miss Yukaiheim, I'm not that kind of person. Yukaiheim insisted, placing the money into Loria's hands. I understand that money is just material wealth, unworthy of Miss Loria's noble soul. But you've helped me, and I can't do nothing in return. Please accept it. Loria, her voice trembling, exclaimed, No way. Yukaiheim persisted, Please. Take it, Loria replied with a firm no. Take it, Yukaiheim insisted. A tug of war ensued between them, but eventually, Loria reluctantly pocketed the coins. She sighed and looked at the sky, her expression tinged with melancholy. Miss Yukaiheim, I don't care much for money, but how about this? I'll accept the money for now, and consider it a way for you to be part of my life. I won't use it, and whenever you need it, you can come to me. Yukaiheim agreed with a nod. The knight's code mentioned. The knight stood on a solitary peak, allowing the mountain wind to gently caress his tattered clothes. He patted his dusty armor, leaving behind a golden path paved with humility, bravery, devotion, diligence, moderation, and more. Without a doubt, Miss Loria embodied qualities like humility, bravery, and moderation all in one. Miss Loria? A lady with such a noble spirit blessed me as soon as I left home. Yukaiheim expressed her gratitude, filled with emotion. She had always been captivated by adventure stories since childhood, dreaming of becoming a knight and taking on giant windmills in vast meadows. Her father, however, didn't allow her to embark on adventures. He had even burned the adventure story books she used to read. Frustrated, she had run away from home with her pocket money. Despite being a beginner, she believed her rich experience from adventure stories and the goddess's favor would eventually make her father see her differently. Miss Loria, may the goddess protect you, kind-hearted one, Yukaiheim said, holding her hands to her chest, watching Loria depart. Loria skated away, pondering the slim possibility of Yukaiheim catching up and reclaiming her money. She walked until Yukaiheim was out of sight, then stopped. Five hundred, ha ha. Loria couldn't contain her joy. In the simulator, finding easy ways to make quick money was a challenge, but now, she had effortlessly earned a substantial sum. The personally certified big fat sheep from the simulator had proved to be quite useful in this regard. With this newfound wealth, Loria could run several more simulations. However, her relation was fleeting. The thought that these coins could potentially be swindled away by some scam artist in Creek Town troubled her. Rather than giving it to someone who may not appreciate it, 
why not give it to me? At least I won't call you gullible behind your back. But she decided to set this matter aside for now. Loria reopened the simulator, intending to conduct another simulation. Time was running out, and she needed to uncover the mastermind behind everything. She carefully reviewed the records of previous simulations, trying to identify the most suspicious individuals. First, Guildmaster Adeline. In the fourth simulation from the previous day, she had informed Guildmaster Adeline of some news. Yet, when she returned home, she was swiftly knocked out. Second, the mayor. In the second simulation of the day, the mayor appeared, raising suspicions that he might be connected to the hidden leader incident. Third, a journalist from the Oda Travel newspaper. Suspicions surrounding the mayor were shared with this journalist. Fourth, Felix. While at the Adventurers Management Guild, Felix had interacted harmoniously with his colleagues, efficiently performing tasks and volunteering for additional responsibilities. She decided to start with Guildmaster Adeline and paid 100 Oda coins. This time, she intended to stay by Guildmaster Adeline's side in hopes of finding any possible clues. Loria found herself immersed in the simulator, but the outcome was nothing short of astonishing. The life simulator has been activated. Day 1, it was the weekend, so Guildmaster Adeline had the day off. You decided to relax and enjoy a slime foot massage. An experience that almost left you in bliss, despite the 50 Oda coins it cost. Your mood was lifted, and you thought, I'll come again tomorrow. Loria was taken aback. This didn't seem like something she would do. When you got home in the evening, regret started to eat at you due to the 50 Oda coins you had spent. You tossed and turned all night, unable to sleep. Loria rubbed her eyes in disbelief. It felt like a terrible fabrication. Impossible. I'd never do that. On the second day, you returned early to hop and skip slime, contemplating whether to indulge in another foot massage, but because you had forgotten your wallet, you had no choice but to return home. She was again left perplexed by this account. On your way home, you were suddenly attacked from behind, and a blow to the back of your head left you with a concussion. You had to spend 30 Oda coins for treatment. Who dares to attack me? Loria's anger flared. However, the limited information provided in the simulator didn't allow for any conclusions about the attacker's identity. Day 3, you continued to assist Guildmaster Adeline with her tasks and earned her praise. While she was momentarily distracted, you discreetly investigated her office but found nothing unusual. Day 4, you continued helping Guildmaster Adeline, and everything proceeded smoothly without any anomalies. Day 5, you continued to assist Guildmaster Adeline, and everything remained normal. Day 6, impressed by your dedication, Guildmaster Adeline promoted you to be her secretary. As you worked on complex tasks for the day, you visited her house to work together. There, you discovered her house was grand and magnificent, indicating she was wealthier than you had imagined. Loria was left dumbfounded. The narrative was now entirely unexpected. Upon returning home, you stayed up all night in deep thought. Finally, it dawned on you that battling monster waves and such was of no real importance. Instead, you believed that life was too short, and rather than seeking Guildmaster Adeline's approval through your work, it would be better to charm her and become the lifelong, well-cared-for wife of the Guildmaster. This was not at all what Loria had in mind. Loria was bewildered and left with more questions than answers. The simulation presented a bizarre version of herself and Guildmaster Adeline that didn't align with reality. Chapter 10 The Accused Loria When the simulated time reached the fifth day, Loria anticipated the following development. Miss Loria successfully gained Guildmaster Adeline's trust and was granted unrestricted access to her residence. Little did anyone suspect that the noble and upright Miss Loria, a female knight, possessed astonishing talents as a secret agent. Working at Guildmaster Adeline's residence, the ace secret agent, Miss Loria, employed her special skills with remarkable finesse. She not only carried out the tasks assigned by Guildmaster Adeline but also discreetly searched every nook and cranny of the house. Every corner, from the living room and kitchen to the bedroom, bathroom, and even the hidden secret chamber, was meticulously explored. Furniture, books, letters, writing tools, kitchen utensils, 
and even discarded undergarments were all thoroughly examined. Following these actions, Miss Loria had unveiled all Guildmaster Adeline's secrets. However, what on earth is happening here? Looking at the content that appeared on the simulator, Loria was on the verge of fainting from anger. She, Loria, a proud entry-level knight, a proper young woman of the modern era with a formal position, was apparently considering abandoning her quest for the truth and planning to use her charm to seduce skilled master Adeline. This is complete nonsense. Do I look like the kind of deceitful woman skilled in scheming? Loria's expression resembled that of a startled wildcat, conveying a ferocious and menacing demeanor, as though she could consume someone whole. Slander, slander. This is a defamation of my character. She desperately wanted to shut down the simulator immediately, but she refrained from doing so, not because of the simulated content, but for the rewards it promised. And then, the situation took an unexpected turn. Perhaps she had only been pretending to take it easy, but in reality, she was planning her next big move. After all, there was no evidence to suggest that she truly was a genius spy. How would a female knight, who lacked espionage skills, uncover the secrets of the cunning, blonde, busty guild master Adeline? Loria realized she might need to rely on her own physical attributes. As Adeline was distracted by her incredible endurance, the knight leaned closer and whispered a few cunning words into her ear. Sacrificing myself for the well-being of countless families in Creek Town, I wept until my last breath. I truly am amazing. Loria continued reading further. Day 7, Guildmaster Adeline officially promoted you to be her secretary. Your basic salary was increased by 30%, and your motivation for work skyrocketed in the evening. You went to the guildmaster's house to handle some documents. As you mentioned how warm it was, you intentionally loosened your collar. Guildmaster Adeline didn't show any extra reaction. Day 8, in the evening, you went to the guildmaster's house to handle some documents. While you were using the restroom, you intentionally left the door open, accidentally revealing guildmaster Adeline who came in unexpectedly. She didn't show any extra reaction. Day 9. You accompanied Adeline, the guildmaster, to attend the Creek Town development meeting hosted by the mayor. After an enthusiastic discussion, the mayor invited everyone to relax at the Slime Foot Spa in the Red Light District. You put on a shorter skirt and, after entering the same private room with guildmaster Adeline, you intentionally sat opposite her, allowing her to see your embarrassed expression. In the evening, when you returned to guildmaster Adeline's house, you pleaded for her forgiveness regarding your embarrassment, you pitifully explained that it wasn't intentional and attributed your ungraceful behavior to being unwell. Day 10, Guildmaster Adeline took you to the hospital for an examination. The doctors all said that you were perfectly normal, as strong as an ox. In the evening, when you returned to Guildmaster Adeline's home, she used your body for an experiment. As the experiment was halfway through, you willingly sat on Guildmaster Adeline's lap. Is it time to begin? Loria's eyes sparkled with excitement. All that remained was to wait until Adeline was exhausted and her defenses crumbled, enabling Loria to coax the truth from her. She was a woman capable of conquering the adult entertainment industry. Adeline was no match for her. Guildmaster Adeline turned the tables, engaging in a fierce battle that lasted for two hours. Ultimately, you were defeated and fainted, Loria. Day 11, you were in the office, assisting Guildmaster Adeline with her work. In the evening, Guildmaster Adeline took care of you, and you felt very happy. Day 12, you were in the office, assisting Guildmaster Adeline with her work. Day 13, you were. Day 14, Loria. When will this ever end? On the 18th and 19th days. The simulated events underwent successive changes. On the 18th day, Guildmaster Adeline was in her office handling various matters. In the evening, you assisted Guildmaster Adeline with her official duties, and you felt very happy. On the 19th day, Guildmaster Adeline was in her office attending to your affairs. In the evening, you returned, and Adeline continued to handle your affairs. You felt doubly delighted, Loria. How much further is this going to go? The expression on her face had completely vanished. It became hard. Her fist clenched tightly. What kind of simulator is this? 
It's nothing but lies. Day 20, while Guildmaster Adeline was dealing with you, you confessed your feelings to her. Guildmaster Adeline said that she doesn't have romantic feelings for you, but she will take responsibility for you, and she indeed needs a companion. Day 21, you and Guildmaster Adeline set off for Clarence City, on the way. You encountered a green skin orc girl. Guildmaster Adeline scared away the green skin orc girl. Day 22. You and Guildmaster Adeline got married in Clarence City. Guildmaster Adeline confessed her true background to you. She is the eldest daughter of Count Ladilia and came to Creek Town alone because she didn't want to obey the arrangements of her family. Day 25. You and Guildmaster Adeline set off to visit Count Ladilia's estate to meet her parents. On the way, you heard that Creek Town was destroyed by a horde of monsters. It seemed like most of the monsters had been affected by illusions. Day 35, Count Lidilia didn't approve of you, a poor peasant from the countryside, but he had no choice but to accept Guildmaster Adeline. Day 45, after a prolonged period of training, your endurance had greatly improved, and you could now match Guildmaster Adeline. Day 61, lately, Guildmaster Adeline experienced some pain in her waist, and you thoughtfully made her some chicken soup. Day 67, lately, Guildmaster Adeline's eyes were a bit blurry. You advised her not to work for the time being, so Guildmaster Adeline, spent the whole day tending to you at home. Day 68, when you woke up in the morning, you discovered that Guildmaster Adeline had passed away. Adeline von Lidilia, the eldest daughter of Count Lidilia, a prodigy of the Officer Academy and a rising star in the Oder Empire, tragically passed away at a young age of 22. On the same afternoon, you were sent to the guillotine by Count Lidilia. The simulation came to an end, achieving the ending, Lady Knight Enchantress. Congratulations to the player for achieving the achievement slayer and earning an additional reward of plus 2 stamina. Congratulations to the player for achieving the achievement Toda's guillotine and earning an extra reward of plus one strength. Congratulations to the brave player for accomplishing the achievement Enchantress among humans and receiving an extra reward of plus two stamina. Seeing this simulation result, Loria seethed with anger, trembling uncontrollably. Despite the scorching weather, she broke into a cold sweat, and her hands and feet turned ice cold. The simulator was oppressive, and Loria yearned to stand up and assert herself. Oh, no. Chapter 11 Can it be my fault that the Guildmaster passed away? Adeline von Lidilia passed away at a young age, only 22 years old. Loria stared at the words displayed on the simulator, reading them over 20 times. There was no doubt, this was not an illusion. In the simulated ending, Adeline did indeed pass away on a simple and ordinary morning. But, so what? Miss Loria was filled with anger, and she even became so agitated that she stomped her foot down firmly on the ground with a feeling of indignation. Can I really be blamed for this? They put me on the guillotine without even conducting an investigation. Those wicked nobles. She felt that Adeline's death had nothing to do with her at all. If there was really a connection, then during the time they spent together after marriage, why didn't she have any problems at all? And the previous few simulations and this simulation all clearly demonstrated one thing, frequent intimate encounters won't lead to death. Otherwise, if she had faced off against Queen Slime and dozens of green skin orc maidens, she would have been exhausted to death a long time ago. How could she possibly have obtained the ending of Queen Slime's bride and shared companions of the green skin orc maidens? In my opinion, Adeline must have had a hidden ailment for a long time. Lorian nodded earnestly, aching back, blurry vision. These are all signs that an illness is taking hold. Adeline didn't pay attention to these signs, and so, on a certain morning, she sadly passed away under the weight of illness. Unfortunately, at that time, Loria was lying beside Adeline, and the unreasonable members of Lydilia's family treated her as the culprit who had caused Adeline's death. The name of this ending is called Lady Knight Enchantress, which Loria doesn't recognize at all. But I am a pure human. If I am an enchantress, then what is Adeline? She admits that there was a mistake in her simulation, but her mistake was simply not reminding Adeline to seek medical attention in time. This kind of error couldn't possibly lead to being sent to the guillotine, could it? 
Loria wants to go and have a battle with Adeline right now, to see if someone would really end up dead. She took a few deep breaths, finally managing to calm herself down. Forget it. After all, it was just a simulation event. Getting a little upset for a while was enough. There was no need to harm oneself over it. Loria started to view the simulated rewards. This time, she unlocked three achievements at once in the simulation, gaining a total of four points of endurance and one point of strength. In this way, her attributes were once again greatly enhanced. Attributes, Strength 7, Agility 6, Endurance 15, Intelligence 5, Spirit 7, Charm 90. When adventurers have lower levels, simply increasing their attributes can boost their career level. For example, if any of the regular attributes exceeds 25, the career level on the identity card can change from F to E. Of course, this doesn't include charm. If Loria's charisma were truly as high as 25, she could easily be called the Enchantress Queen. Not to mention the monster girls outside of Creek Town. Even the townspeople of Creek Town would first want to drive her away. Loria, looking at this middle finger shaped attribute value, wasn't feeling very happy. Her speculation was confirmed. If she continued to simulate like this, her attributes would definitely change into a shape like the elite of the prestigious night training school should be charging into battle with a great sword in hand, rather than becoming a meat shield to absorb damage. Oh dear, oh dear. You didn't really think I enjoy being slapped, did you? Loria wickedly shifted her gaze away from her talent. Optimist. Next time, I must definitely practice in the simulation and try to gain some strength or agility attributes. As for intelligence, she had given up hope. Who made her profession an apprentice knight? After all, intelligence isn't important for a knight, let alone five points. Even having just one point in the early stages is sufficient. After all, this intelligence is not the same as that intelligence. To be honest, Loria felt that she wasn't foolish. In reality, she could become a bucket knight if she raised all her attributes, but the cost required for that was too high. Getting stronger is good, so that next time I encounter those slime girls and green skin orc girls, I can directly defeat them instead of using a water attack to defeat them. Loria tucked the identity card into her pocket. The biggest gain from this simulation wasn't in terms of attributes, but in the information revealed through the simulated text. After forming a bond, I was working on documents while Adeline was working on me every day. Because of this, Adeline simply didn't have time to plan the monster wave. And when we were on our way to Clarence City to register our marriage, we were attacked by green skin orc girls. And just as the monsters were attacking Greek town, we were on our way to Count Lydalia's estate. With all this evidence put together, Adeline's suspicion can basically be ruled out. Loria planned to give it one final try in tomorrow's free rehearsal. If everything went well, she would be able to seek Adeline's help. There's one more thing. Loria looked up, and her gaze finally settled on the contents of the second day's rehearsal. On the way home. You suddenly found yourself being ambushed from behind. Because of this ambush, she lost 30 Oda coins. That's 30 Oda coins, enough for her to experience 3 out of 5 slime foot massages. Although no one bothered her after that, it didn't mean that the person who ambushed her didn't want to continue ambushing her. The reason behind it was that ever since then, she had always stayed by Adeline's side, either charming Adeline or doing good things with Adeline. As a brilliant student at the Officer Academy, Adeline displayed remarkable abilities. If those who dare to attack her see Adeline standing by her side, would they still dare to cause trouble again? Let's plan to catch this person tomorrow. Otherwise, who knows what more outrageous things he might do one day. Loria switched off the simulator. Today's simulation came to an end. She had no interest in revisiting how she had battled with Adeline in the office. The texts in the simulator were written too briefly. Instead of looking at that, it's better to imagine it yourself. At that moment, Loria was still in the red light district. So when she looked up, she saw the restaurant hop and skip slime with a picture of a slime girl in a swimsuit hanging outside. Experience a slimy foot massage for only 50 Oda coins. Yes. No. No, she exclaimed. Now I really cannot spend money recklessly. 
Let's wait until we safely overcome this crisis before deciding. By then, she could directly splurge on a night at the most renowned entertainment district, and even have a few lively companions to sing and dance alongside her. Loria turned round and prepared to go home. Just as she reached the street, she suddenly noticed a large group of people gathered together. The first thing that caught her eye was the mayor's secretary, while standing next to the mayor's secretary was a tall woman with red framed glasses and a grey hat. Loria immediately remembered the simulated process of the queen of the porn industry ending, which mentioned that the reporter from Oda Travel newspaper would come to the red light district for investigation. It seems like this is the one, this reporter was one of the four suspicious individuals she had listed. You're the next person to be investigated. Chapter 12, Be Good, Let Big Sister Check Your Body. After leaving the red light district, Loria returned to her own home. As usual, she would be cosplaying as a lazy pig in bed. However, today, how could she possibly fall asleep? As soon as she arrived home, she took out her unused pair of large swords with her hands. Tomorrow she would go and expose the person who had ambushed her, and this sword was indispensable. After wandering for a while, Loria went nearby and fetched some lime powder. The large sword and the lime powder were a perfect combination. Who says the lime sword master is not a sword master? After placing two items into her inventory, Loria finally felt at ease. In these past few days, her stamina had greatly improved. Simply put, stamina is a quality closely tied to physical strength, health, resilience, resistance to poison, hydration level, and so on. With her prior preparations, dealing with the sneaky person who ambushed her shouldn't be a problem. Loria started to ponder about what she needed to do for the next simulation. Time was running out, so she had to do her best to gather as much information as possible in the upcoming simulation. But the problem was, she could only influence the direction at the beginning of the simulation. As time passed, the version of her in the simulation would become more and more outrageous. Driven by her true nature, yuck, she exclaimed, that wasn't her true nature at all. That was just the silly simulator's stereotypical impression of her. Her body was as sensitive as the heroine in an R18 game, but that didn't mean she was insatiable like the heroine. She had indeed studied at the Knight Academy and possessed a strong sense of justice, so she would never engage in something like seducing Guildmaster Adeline to punish herself. Anyway, before the next simulation, she had to plan ahead so that the simulated outcome wouldn't be too biased. First, I cunningly devised a plan to deal with the person who had ambushed me. Second, I discreetly approached Guildmaster Adeline and informed her that someone was scheming in the shadows. I then cautioned her that the mastermind was close by, and any investigation must be carried out covertly to avoid raising the mastermind's suspicions. Loria remembered the time when she had been swiftly defeated by the mastermind during the simulation, but Guildmaster Adeline had readily agreed to help her. Loria thought that this time, there wouldn't be any obstacles. However, there was one thing that needed to be noted. While on guard against the unseen manipulators, we must also remain cautious around Guildmaster Adeline. Especially, we must not twiggle or show off in front of her, for if she were to mistakenly believe that I have feelings for her, the consequences would be unimaginable. Loria had every reason to believe that Guildmaster Adeline was a hidden troublemaker. At the very beginning, the simulator displayed the message, Guildmaster Adeline showed no extra signs. A few days passed, and soon enough, whether it was in the office or at home, Guildmaster Adeline was disciplining her relentlessly. Eventually, it escalated to the point where she was punishing her from morning until night without a break. What is this if not trouble? I can't possibly be the one holding onto her waist and not letting her go, right? Loria pouted. That blonde busty woman sure knows how to put on a show. If she's misunderstood, she might end up losing her freedom and be punished until she's too weak to do anything else, right? The precious opportunity for practice could not be wasted in this way. Loria couldn't help but sigh. This world is too dangerous. Queen Slime, Green Orc Girl, Skeleton Lady, and Guildmaster Adeline, they were all naughty women, with her delicate nature like a battered protagonist. She must protect herself. Next, 
My task is to stay in touch with the guildmaster while secretly investigating the journalist's background. Loria remembered that the journalist would visit the Adventurers Management Guild for a tour, and the person in charge of reception would be Felix. This time, she had to snatch this task for herself. After she finished making the plan, she went to take a warm bath. Before going to sleep, she drank a cup of warm milk and then did 20 minutes of gentle stretching exercises. After everything was over, she snuggled into her bed. The wall clock chimed softly as the time reached midnight, with 23 days remaining until the onslaught of the monsters. Let's begin. Day 1, early in the morning. You arrived at Hop and Skip Slime. Seeing you lingering at the entrance, the owner said you were the first customer of the day and offered you a 50% discount on a slime foot massage. Oh no! Loria's face turned pale with fear. Half off, which means you only need to spend 25 Oda coins. So cunning. In doing so, wouldn't her carefully crafted plan be rendered useless? Don't go up, up, up until new content was refreshed. Loria's anxious heart finally let go. Prioritizing the bigger picture. This time you steadfastly refused your boss, claiming that you were just a passing Cayman rider. Great, this is the real me. Loria was thrilled beyond measure. As soon as she arrived, she effortlessly resolved a great crisis, sensing that this time she would pave a path to a brand new world. As you walked home, someone on the road attempted to ambush you but you were well prepared and successfully defended yourself. Just then, seven burly men jumped out from the side, but you quickly scattered lime powder, avoiding an awkward confrontation with them. After a fierce battle, you handed over all the people who ambushed you to the patrol officer. Afterwards, you spent 30 Oda coins to treat your wounds. 30 more coins? Has this world lion come to an end? On the second day, you found Guildmaster Adeline and told her that someone was causing trouble in secret, and the investigation could only be done discreetly. She skeptically agreed. On the third day, a reporter from Oda Travel newspaper visited the Adventurers Management Guild. You volunteered to be her guide, and Guildmaster Adeline agreed. You learned that the reporter's name was Vita Orain. You led Vita on a tour of the guild, and you both had a delightful time together. On the fourth day, Vita volunteered to have you guide her for further exploration of Creek Town. Guildmaster Adeline agreed and informed you that the investigation had yielded no results yet. You and Vita visited the attractions in Creek Town, and along the way, you learned that Vita's purpose for this visit was not only for the Red Light District but also to publish a special travel edition about Creek Town. On the fifth day, you and Vita went to a famous restaurant in Creek Town for a review. Upon learning that Vita's food, clothing, shelter, and transportation were all taken care of by the newspaper, you couldn't help but feel envious. In the evening, you both went for a foot bath, and you were quite satisfied, although you pretended to be serious. On the sixth day, you and Vita began your interviews in the red light district. On the first day, you experienced the pink dream. You were very satisfied, although you pretended to be serious. On the seventh day, Vitu and I tried out the hop and skip slime. You had a great time and you couldn't help but enjoy it, even though you pretended to be serious. On the eighth day, Vitu and you had the opportunity to experience the magical orc lady's aromatic massage. It was truly delightful and you couldn't help but feel satisfied, even though you pretended to be serious. During the massage, Vita confided in you about her past experiences and how she had developed a complete disinterest towards men. This is why she chose to join the Oda Travel Newspaper's specialized team in covering the unique aspects of the entertainment industry. On the ninth day, Vita and you experienced the front back geisha massage. In order to please you, the geisha performing the massage got exhausted after three rounds, but you weren't completely satisfied. On the tenth day, Guildmaster Adeline informed you that the investigation had yielded no results so far. You started to feel indifferent toward this matter, realizing that being a knight was not as fulfilling as being a ride for noble ladies. You decided to dedicate your life to the Oda Travel Newspaper's specialized team in covering the unique aspects of the entertainment industry. Loria, you and Vita had an experience with special services like the waterbed. While enjoying the moment, you pondered on how to please Vita and eventually entered the Oda travel newspaper by taking a backdoor approach. 
because it was getting late. You and Vita stayed at a lover's hotel, where she only booked one room. In the middle of the night, Vita suddenly pressed you firmly against the sofa. You were extremely scared, thinking that Vita was the mastermind behind everything. You yelled, Vita, please stop. But Vita shouted back, I can't help myself, you little troublemaker. Just let me check your body. Upon hearing these words, you, who were pressed against the sofa, relaxed and smiled. Chapter 13 Miss Loria, the mistress of cunning schemes. You relaxed and smiled, but these words made Miss Loria, who had already sat up, feel as if she were facing a formidable foe. After observing these past few days, she discovered that the simulated contents of the simulator were written very succinctly. Although it wasn't extremely concise, there were also very few detailed descriptions. Once detailed descriptions appear, it means that something bad might happen. Don't go, please don't laugh. Please quickly cry for me. It's okay if you don't cry, just shout for help directly. The people outside will definitely rush in to save you. The end. There was no need to be rescued anymore. Just as Loria was excitedly slapping her own thigh, new simulated content emerged. Vita said, even if you shout, it won't help because before coming in, I secretly told the hotel receptionist that tonight's game would have a storyline, so the receptionist should not be surprised. You pretended to be very scared, tremblingly begging Vita to spare you but Vita became even more excited instead. Vita began to punish you, and the dual assault on your body and spirit fully awakened your optimistic talents. You broke down, Vita couldn't dodge in time, and you almost choked her to death. Angry Vita punished you all night until the next morning, and in the end, both of you fell unconscious from exhaustion. Loria's face turned dark halfway. On the first day of the simulation, she was determined to make a big splash. Is this what you meant by making a big splash oh dear, why didn't I just drown that wicked woman, Vita? In the simulator, Loria felt that the one responsible for spoiling this simulation opportunity again was Vita. Speaking frankly, even if I have 1% of the blame, does that mean that Vita doesn't have 99% of the blame? Yes, I have impu motives. I wanted to take advantage of Vita's connections, but if Vita simply ignores me, then there wouldn't be so many troubles, right? And this time, she was the one who started it. I was just going along with her performance. Loria felt indignant. She continued to look down. Day 11. Waking up in the morning, looking at you crying in the corner, Vita sincerely apologizes to you and promises to make every effort to make it up to you. She also says that if you're willing, she will take you away from Greek town, this place of trouble and arrange a place to stay and work for you in the imperial city. Crying, you tell her that you don't want any compensation, you just want what happened last night to not exist. Vita continued apologizing, she told you about her childhood and the abuse she and her mother endured, and she informed you that afterwards, she would occasionally become unstable and have intense violent tendencies. You embraced Vita to comfort her and she was deeply moved by your gesture. She said you were a kind girl and assured you that she would not let you down. Because the bed in the lover's inn got flooded, Vita had to compensate the lover's inn with 20 Oda coins. Day 12, you made an excuse to stay home with Vita instead of going to work. You and Vita spent the whole day goofing around at home. You told Vita that you didn't like money, which made her even more guilty. She insisted on making you sleep in a pile of coins. Day 13, you continued to have fun and goof around with Vita at home. Around noon, while you and Vita were playing in the bathtub, you heard knock on the door from outside. Nervously, you opened the door and found Guildmaster Adeline standing there. Guildmaster Adeline said she would discuss work with you tomorrow. Day 14, Guildmaster Adeline told you that the investigation had made progress nearby Greek town, water spirits had inexplicably been attacking passing merchants, which had never happened before, she was preparing to organize a team of adventurers to investigate the cause, you were not interested in this at all, because Vita had told you that she would take you away from Greek town in two days, as you were about to leave the office, Guildmaster Adeline suddenly asked where you and Vita had been in the past two days, 
You stumbled over your words and couldn't come up with an answer. Guildmaster Adeline said that she knew Vita was hiding in your room yesterday. She also said that she had conducted an investigation at the Lover's Inn. The receptionist at the inn heard your cries for mercy. Guildmaster Adeline told you not to be afraid and assured you that she would bring justice to your situation. You remained silent, and Guildmaster Adeline had no choice but to let you go. Day 15, you heard from your colleagues that Guildmaster Adeline and Vita started arguing. Day 16, while you were playing a game of pretend with Vita, Guildmaster Adeline suddenly burst in from outside, and the two of them started fighting. Question mark. No, what kind of role playing game is this we're playing? No, no, that's not it. Loria wanted to know something else. She just wondered why Guildmaster Adeline cared so much about her. Could it be that Guildmaster Adeline has always had feelings for her? To your surprise, Guildmaster Adeline couldn't gain the upper hand. But as the commotion grew louder, Vita had no choice but to flee. As Guildmaster Adeline held you in her arms, you sobbed and reported Vita. You said that Vita had forced you into all of this. Now, your reputation is ruined, and you feel too ashamed to keep on living. Guildmaster Adeline stopped you and assured you that she would bring justice for you. Day 17, Guildmaster Adeline welcomed you into her home and stayed by your side at all times. Day 18. You said you wanted to repay Guildmaster Adeline, but besides offering your physical presence, you didn't know how else you could express your gratitude. Day 19. You and Guildmaster Adeline took the final step together, and Guildmaster Adeline proclaimed that she would grant you a future. Day 22. Vita returned secretly, and you tearfully reported Adeline. You claimed that Adeline had pressured you into this, and that she had long coveted your beauty. Vita tried to take you away but Adeline caught them. They started fighting once again, and Vita managed to escape once more. You believed that following Guildmaster Adeline would lead to a brighter future, so you reported Vita once again. You claimed that Vita had intended to harm you while Adeline was away, which made Guildmaster Adeline very angry. Loria was completely bewildered. What is this? Impossible. I, Loria, am pure and virtuous. Moreover, I am not very intelligent so it is absolutely impossible for me to do such a thing. Day 23, the commotion caused by Guildmaster Adeline and Vita caught the attention of Clarence City. An urgent investigator was dispatched to look into the matter, but there was no sign of a monster wave occurring. On the 24th day, Vita became wanted nationwide. Day 25, to show gratitude towards Guildmaster Adeline, you put forth your utmost effort to exhaust Guildmaster Adeline until she fainted. Day 26. The injuries sustained during Guildmaster Adeline and Vita's battle resurfaced, causing them to be admitted to the hospital. Tearfully, you apologized to them. Day 30. Guildmaster Adeline, after being discharged from the hospital, privately agrees to spend her life with you. Finally, your wish comes true as you become a noblewoman. Simulation ends here. Achieving the ending, the crafty village girl. Achieving the ending, living happily ever after with the Guildmaster 2. Congratulations to the player for achieving the accomplishment pure as ice and jade, and gaining an extra reward of plus 1 intelligence. Congratulations to the player for achieving the accomplishment noble lady, and receiving an extra reward of plus 1 charm. Congratulations to the player for achieving the accomplishment taming the enchantress and receiving an additional reward of plus 2 stamina. Congratulations to the player for achieving a grade D rating, granting the reward of dual wielding bonus. Loria was completely stunned. She had thought that this simulation would lead her to a brand new world, but little did she know that the reality would turn out to be completely different. Chapter 14 I don't want to keep trying. How could I be such a wicked woman? It's impossible, impossible. Loria who had curled back under the covers, was deeply shaken. Even the blanket draped over her began to tremble. She couldn't accept the outcome of this practice exam, it was simply unacceptable. Although she explored every corner of Greek town's bustling streets without spending a penny during this practice, even though in this practice, the monster tide vanished, and Creek town was saved. Even though in this practice, she successfully accompanied Guildmaster Adeline and became a noble lady. However, huh? 
Miss Loria furrowed her brows, realizing that things were not as simple as they seemed in terms of the outcome. This was the best result she had simulated so far. In the previous simulations, she either got defeated by monster girls, killed, or became a geisha. But this time, she ended up becoming a noblewoman. Detective Loria gently touched her chin. If I remember correctly, my initial dream was to secure a stable job and then happily live a laid-back life holding on to that secure job. Before this, in her eyes, the Adventurer's Management Guild job was the secure job she sought. But in this simulation, isn't Guildmaster Adeline also a new secure job? As long as she held on to this secure job, everything she had longed for would be within her reach. Fame? She had it. The status of a noblewoman carries an extraordinary reputation. After all, not everyone can enjoy this title, only the wives of the nobility are worthy of it. Safe? She had it. The Lidilia family was a noble family, though not as prominent as the four prestigious families of the Oder Empire. They were still considered a traditional power that would protect her effortlessly. As for lying flat, that became even more possible. At night, she would lie flat beneath Guildmaster Adeline, sometimes even during the day. During the day, she would lie flat as countless maids attended to her. Similarly, when it comes to lying flat, lying at Lydalia's house is a completely different experience from lying at her own home. Let's not talk about money and such vulgar things in her own home. There was no guildmaster Adeline to help her treat the lingering effects of her hypersensitivity, making her feel fulfilled. Upon careful thinking, isn't this a perfect ending? Why did I bother putting in so much effort? Loria got so excited that she jumped out of bed, even thinking about tearing up the marriage certificate with guildmaster Adeline right away. But just as she was about to slip her feet into the shoes by the bedside, she suddenly came to a halt. Wait. She suddenly realized that this ending is not particularly perfect. Never mind what Vita might think. The important thing is that she comes from a humble background. Even if Guildmaster Adeline has a high opinion of her, what about Guildmaster Adeline's family? From the previous encounter, they were not friendly. And surely, a noble household must have a heap of rules to govern her. Since both my background and abilities are inferior to Guildmaster Adeline's, there's no way I can afford to have another affair, otherwise I'll surely be caught and killed. PFFT, 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 Miss Loria, possessing high moral character and purity, remained steadfast in her loyalty to love. She had no desire to engage in an illicit affair with a sinister monster girl. Contrary to popular belief, she merely wanted to express that by doing so, she would lose her personal freedom. The great Night King Luden once said, Life is precious, but love is even more valuable. If it is for the sake of freedom, both can be forsaken. That doesn't sound like something the Night King Luden would say, does it? Forget it. It doesn't matter. Loria returned to her cozy bed, feeling that this ending didn't match her wish to simply lie down and be free. I. Loria, will never allow anyone to manipulate me. Whether it be the monster girls, Guildmaster Adeline, the princess, or even the goddess, none of them can do as they please. Loria started searching for any other information that the simulation might reveal and analyze the gains and losses, preparing herself for the next battle. First, this simulation didn't clear Vita of suspicion. A reporter who had traveled far and wide possessed strength that could barely rival Guildmaster Adeline. It made some sense, but not entirely. This time, I only scratched the surface of her secrets. Next time, I will dig deeper and uncover everything. Then came the most important piece of information. As the simulation reached the thirteenth day, water spirits attacked passing merchants. You should know that water spirits are famous for being gentle magical creatures. Many water spirit girls work in massage parlors and are well loved by customers. There must be a problem. I remember during the last simulation, the monsters in Creek Town used illusion magic. Something must have happened before that. Okay. In the next simulation, the focus was on both exploring Vita's intentions and entering the territory of the water spirits to see what exactly had happened over there. Before the simulation begins, I have one very important thing to do. Loria clenched her teeth tightly. 
her fingers gliding over the simulated writing. After multiple simulations, one thing has become very clear. Although there were many factors that caused the simulation to deviate from her expectations, the most crucial point was undoubtedly sex. Stop looking at inappropriate things. I must stop looking at inappropriate things with all my determination. If I can stop looking at inappropriate things, my productivity will increase at least twofold. It's a little difficult to defeat it by myself. I need to find other people to help. Loria turned over, and her gaze finally landed on the simulated reward. This time, she simultaneously achieved two different outcomes, marking a new breakthrough. But what's even more eye-catching are the attribute rewards and the new talent reward, dual wielding bonus, dual wielding bonus, an ancient blessing descends upon you, granting you an increase of plus 5 in strength whenever you enter the dual wielding state. Note 1, the term dual wielding refers to both holding an object in each hand and holding objects with both hands. Note 2, regardless of what is being held, the effect of plus 5 strength will always be activated. Loria extended her hands, dual wielding. In her left hand, she held one sword, and in her right hand, she held another. Then, she switched to holding both swords with both hands. She suddenly felt excited, for the Lady Knight. It was truly a divine skill. You see, her power originally had only 7 points, but after adding 5 points, it became 12 points. Super duper mega boost. Wow. This way I can hold the girl's right foot with my left hand and her left foot with my right hand, and it might trigger a dual wielding bonus, right? Yuck. Still, holding a shield in the left hand and wielding a sword in the right hand suits her radiant image better. This reward will be kept for later. If the following two attempts don't receive significantly better rewards than this one, then it will be chosen. Loria turned off the simulator, and enjoyed a peaceful night's sleep. In the morning, after quickly eating something, she put the spare door panel from her house into the inventory. This way, she also acquired the knight's shield. Next, she deliberately wore a cotton helmet and then rushed out of the house. Before strolling near the entrance of Hop and Skip Slime, she planned to contact Lee Wai, the patrol officer first. She wanted him to ambush nearby so they could catch those sneaky attackers in time. Did all this preparation. And I still can't believe they would harm me so much, making me lose 30 Oda coins. 